market capitalization. They've got more assets, more money than any other tech company in the world. And it all started with a guy who said, you know what? I think computers should be nicer to people. And so let's build a computer that has a keyboard. <laughs> that, was, that was brilliant in the day. And so he says, let's build a computer that has a keyboard. Well, that's Steve Jobs way, way back. Here's what Steve Jobs looks like now. He's a little more pensive, still has the John Lennon look going on. And um, this is what I'm, I find interesting about Steve Jobs, that he left the company for a couple years, and the company began to tank because they were making some crazy decisions. Number one, they hired the CEO of Pepsi-Cola to come and run the computer company because they thought, hey, he's doing well with Pepsi. They're the second biggest drink manufacturer in the world. Maybe we, as the second biggest computer company in the world, should hire him. Okay, that's a recipe for stagnation. But anyway, so then he leaves, and a few years later, they hire him back again because they can't live without him. And the first thing he does when he comes back is he does this. You remember that? How many of you are old enough to remember this thing? That's the Blueberry iMac. Dude, that thing was weird. So he comes back on the scene and he says, why are computers beige? We're going to bring cool back to computers. We're going to make these things awesome again. And he's charging an arm and a leg for this because, of course, there's a whole monitor stuck with this computer. And they didn't do that back then. But so he's charging an arm and a leg for this and people buy them. What's the deal? So he goes crazier and he makes one of these things. Do you remember that guy? Okay, so he makes a box, a little spherical box with a monitor that comes out the side. This was the first flat panel popularized in America. You know, so he's ahead of the curve. He's pushing the envelope. And then later on, he's got this thing coming on, if this works for us. He's got this one. Okay, so it's the same basic deal, but now the whole computer is in the screen. I'm just taking you a little bit through Steve Jobs, and I, I'm going to make a point here soon, and we're going to get back to the Bible and really dig in, but i got to show you this thing here. Because uh, he says, this says that Steve Jobs and that player is the must-have music player everyone is talking about. Do you remember back when they used to talk about the iPod? You know, a long time ago? <laughs> it's like still huge. I don't get this. So he invents this thing, and then lo and behold, we have this device, which everybody... Um, wants and I have. <laughs> okay, so I'm an early adopter when it comes to Apple, and as a result of this whole iPad phenomena, iPhone, iPod touch thing, we've got s something right here that showed up yesterday. This is landmark in the world of technology. Showed up yesterday on their website. They have sold 10 billion apps on their app store. That's like McDonald's hamburger level <laughs> stuff, you know? They've billions, okay, so why, why are we even dealing with all this? Because people look at Steve Jobs and the stuff that he does, and they think it's cool. They think it's got something special. And I'm claiming today that the reason it has something special, the reason people clamor for those kind of products, the reason I take a Dell computer and install the Macintosh operating system on it and put an Apple sticker on the front is because people think that stuff is cooler because... It's growing, okay? It's moving. It's making progress. It's ahead of the curve. We live in a society that rec recognizes that we need to be growing and developing and moving. And the same thing is true with you and your spiritual life. I want you to be cooler than Apple. I want people to love you more than an iPod because you've got the God of heaven and earth alive and inside of you, and he has wired you up to develop and to grow. I'm going to draw your attention to just a couple principles that I've found in the Bible and I also see in Steve Jobs. So I just think it's cool. Here you go. Number one, see the destination before others do. If you want to be ahead of the curve, you have to see where society is going. You have to see where things are going. People want cool computers, not just beige computers. So that's for seeing the destination. Next is take some risks. Take risks of initiative despite the dangers, despite the, the things that people might say, wait a minute, you're going to make a computer entirely out of blue plastic? That's insane. Wait a minute, you're going to make a portable music player that has a hard drive built into it? That's a recipe for disaster. Wait a minute, you're going to make a tablet? Microsoft has made tablets for decades and no one has ever bought them. And now you're going to make one? This doesn't make any sense. Take initiative anyway if you see that destination. Number three, be disciplined despite the distractions, and number four, endure with faith. 
The reason I think these are true and, and they make sense with a guy like Steve Jobs, the reason they're true with products that you buy is because God has wired you to be a person who values and chases after growth. And all I want to do is to help you today apply that growth attitude to your spiritual and personal life so that you become a growing person. Okay, so here we go. The first blank I want you to fill out as we begin to do this uh, growth application to you is this one here. Here's the destination. God made you to be like him. Like we said, it's important that you recognize where you're going. And the most important direction you're going is that God has wired you up. He's designed you to be like him. Take a look at these verses. In Genesis 2, 7, it says, The Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. We're dust. God breathes into us and makes us living. But why did he do it? Look at the next verse. Genesis 1, 27. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. God's desire is that you become like him, that you bear his image, that you get transformed more and more in your life to be more and more like he is. I was thinking about this in light of the whole instant health pill desire, and I thought, well, are there any instant health pills on the market? Well, yeah, there are a couple. There's one called Hoodia, right? I've never heard of this before a couple years ago, but it's like a, a diet pill called Hoodia or Hoodia or something. And, and here's an example of a dude who took it. Look at that. <laughs> if you know him, it's not John Canty. <laughs> it's some other dude who took this pill, and lo and behold, the pill made him... Um, Whatever he is on, on the side, he, he might have gotten, maybe the right is before and the left is after. And it's a, no, but so the left is a before shot, the right is an after shot. Then, I don't know if you remember this, but before Extreme Makeover had the home edition, there was another edition that doesn't, didn't have the words home edition. It just said Extreme Makeover. And, and so here's an example of a lady who was on that show. Left is before, right is after, okay? You can still see that's the same person, Okay. But take a look at this one. You almost don't even recognize that as the same person, okay? But she was on Extreme Makeover. We're talking, uh, they did plastic surgery, they did liposuction, they did um, augmentation, they did all kinds of things. And here's another lady who had the same Extreme Makeover experience. On her, they installed a plastic chin, 